Welcome back to this second part of My Day in Edinburgh. And now I have come to the Balmoral, one of my favourite hotels, for afternoon tea. The Balmoral is an institution in Edinburgh and is steeped in history and elegance. I'm also going to be showing you, at the end of the video, my scones recipe. So afternoon tea consists of three different elements. We have sandwiches and savouries, scones, and then we have cakes and pastries. So I'm just gonna have, start with the savouries, and then I will move on to the scones. So now that I finished the sandwiches and savouries, which were absolutely delicious, I'm going on to the scones. And scones are one of my favourite things. It goes beautifully with a cup of tea, and there's nothing nicer than that combination of jam and cream. So I am only going to be having jam today because this isn't a vegan cream. And I just want to tell you a little etiquette tip. It's not important, but it just gives you a little bit of a heads up. When you're eating scones, people think that you have to cut them with a knife. But actually, the proper way is just to break them with your hands, like that. And then you can add on the jam and the cream and enjoy them. So now, after indulging in the scones, I'm having even more indulgence with these beautiful pastries. And even though I'm quite full, I am going to try my best to have one because they're so pretty and I really appreciate the way that the chef has made the effort. I know how hard it is to bake. So just to make them this small and delicate is a real skill. So I'm gonna tuck in. So my tea time has come to an end at the Balmoral, but they don't let you go away empty handed. They give you the most sweet little gift and you get these little tins. We have some shortbread in here, which is very delicious some special Balmoral tea. It's loose leaf, so you can add it to a teapot and use a strainer, it's the best kind of tea. And then here we have some a little box of chocolate truffles. Now I know that, especially during these weird times that we're living in, that it's not always possible to get to a hotel to enjoy afternoon tea. So I thought that I'd end this video by showing you my scone recipe. And the good thing about scones is that they're so easy to bake. I think it was probably the first thing that I ever baked that turned out perfectly the first attempt. So I know that if I can do it, you can do it. These scones are so simple, but delicious. And I'm gonna change up the recipe a little bit this time by adding in chocolate chips. And with Christmas coming up, I just thought that this would be a little naughty treat to add to them and just give them a bit more of a festive flair. So that's what I'm gonna do with these scones today. A few people did ask me for the recipe for the scones and I have uploaded it now onto my blog, nicholasfairford.com. So those who've been looking for the recipe, you'll be able to find it there. So let's carry on, let's get baking and I'm gonna show you just how easy and simple it is to bake a good English scone. So in this bowl, I have 350 grams of self-raising flour and to that, I'm gonna add in 95 grams a vegan spread, which is just like butter, but it's vegan, non-dairy. I have three tablespoons of caster sugar. I'm gonna use a pinch of salt, and I'm gonna use one teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm gonna put all of those things into the bowl. For the moment, we're gonna just put to the side the milk, chocolate chips, and the raisins. And let's focus on this. And what I'm gonna do is, I've just washed my hands with cold water, and that will when we're putting the butter and everything together and we're gonna make fine breadcrumbs, having cold hands will really stop it from becoming too clunky. And the key to this part of making scones, and actually the key to a really beautiful scone, 
is very delicate work. So I only have small hands and my hands are perfect for that because they're delicate and I can really just make sure that my scones are light and fluffy. So let's begin. Butter going in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm adding in the sugar. I've got a quarter teaspoon of salt. I've got no idea what that does, but everyone seems to do it and it seems to work. So I just tag along and do it too. <laughs> and then I've got a teaspoon of baking powder. So now this is the bit. Everyone knows, I've said it before, I detest getting my hands in here and putting it all together, but it's the only way. So here goes. <laughs> delicate work, very delicate work. I said before in my last scone video that you should try to imagine that you're massaging a little puppy and actually that is a really good tip. It always works. When you're, massage, when you're stroking a newborn puppy, you want to be very gentle and make sure that you're being very nice and careful. And that's what you need to do with your scones too. So I'm just being very light with my fingers. And I'm gonna stop as soon as we have fine breadcrumbs. So as you can see, we have really fine breadcrumbs and that's the exact consistency that we're looking for, for buttery, beautiful scones. Now we're gonna finish the process by adding in 150 ml of oat milk. And I haven't measured out my raisins or my chocolate chips. I'm just gonna use as many as I want because that is the joy of life. So in with the milk, in with the chocolate chips, I'm just going to put a handful, maybe add some more. Same with these fruit, lots of fruit, and I'm going to stir through with this knife. And I'm being very, very gentle. And we're just going to do this until it's combined and most of the milk has been absorbed by our breadcrumbs. <clears throat> and once you've done that, you just need to get your hands in again and start kneading this into a ball until it all comes together and you've got a big ball of dough. And that's when you know it's ready. So very gentle, but still working through. Should start to come together, you see? That's looking really nice. <clears throat> so now that we have our ball of dough, I'm just gonna take a little bit of flour, scatter it onto my work surface, and we are going to roll out the dough onto here until it's about one inch thick. thick. So here we go. Now, I don't know about where you are, but here, since the clocks have gone back, we are just getting such dark nights really quickly. I've just had to put all the lights on, as you can probably see, because it's just so dark. Okay, that's probably fine. Doesn't need to be perfect. Again, I'm just focusing on making sure that I'm not overworking anything. So now I'm gonna cut this into rounds and put it onto the baking tray ready to go in the oven. I have my cookie cutter and I'm just going around the edge. Never ever twist it like this. That will give you a really tough scone. So literally just push it in and take it out as delicately as you can. There we go. They're coming out quite nicely. I think these scones are gonna be really, really buttery. 
which is always a pleasure. When you get to the middle and you have all the edges done, you can just put it back together nice and quickly and then roll it back to its one centimeter thickness. last one is always the nicest because it's always the biggest <laughs> okay. and there we go now sometimes I do like to take a little bit of milk with a brush and brush over the scones just to give them a glaze but actually these are looking quite moist so I'm not going to do that today but I would advise you to do it. It does finish them off nicely and give them a lovely finish. So these are going to go into the oven now for 12 to 14 minutes. The oven is preheated at 180 degrees Celsius so I will see you on the other side. So here they are, golden brown chocolate and fruit filled scones and they will be so wonderful with some jam and cream even though i don't eat cream you can and i would advise you to do so because it will just make them even more delicious so yeah there we go i hope that you've enjoyed this video i hope that you've enjoyed the tour of edinburgh and you can see why i fell in love with it and as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate all your support and wonderful comments. I've just noticed on YouTube that it's just boomed really quickly and I think that's because there are so many people like you who really believe in what I'm doing and the stories that I'm trying to tell. And I think we're all kind of craving that now, especially in the world that we're living in. So thank you for watching and thank you for being my friend. And I'll see you next week.